trigeminal neuralgia there is a pain in one side of the face in the distribution of trigeminal nerve that is what is known as trigeminal neuralgia it can be in the v1 of thalamic division maybe maxillary or mandibular division accordingly it's been uh, characterized and uh, if we look at the icsd3 guidelines or uh, criteria for the trigeminal neuralgia diagnosis the number one is it must be unilateral pain and the paroxysms must be there and the pain characteristics like it should be lasting for few seconds to minutes and of severe intensity and there will be a electric shock like pain shooting or stabbing kind of pain and it must be triggered by innocuous stimuli maybe it's a brushing maybe chewing something may cause a breeze of air that can trigger the pain so there must be a trigger behind it and we must exclude the other conditions accordingly it is known as there is a primary trigeminal neuralgia where there is a vascular compression or there is a secondary trigeminal neuralgia which can be because of something like uh, multiple sclerosis or any kind of bone tremor another one is idiopathic variant where there is no cause and the maximum times we found it's a idiopathic variant and these are the conditions where there is unilateral severe pain that stays for few seconds to minutes and it just incapacitates the patient they're not able to chew something they're not able to drink something and it's very much difficult to live their daily lives many a times it becomes very difficult for them to adjust with the medicines also because all the medicines that we normally give cause some amount of sedation so normally we start with medications carbamazepines and other group of uh, amitriptyline and other group of drugs if it is working well then it's good enough those patients who are having severe pain irrespective of the medications and all we can go for intervention so these days apart from the medications we have minimally invasive interventions so that we normally do number one is the radio frequency ablation whenever there is a division of v2 and v3 are affected it is best to go with radio frequency ablation because it will be cost effective now if v1 v2 v3 all are affected or particularly v1 is affected then it's better to go with percutaneous balloon compression because it will give a longer lasting effect and the pain relief will be better though there will be some kind of masseter weakness can present but maximum time we have seen it has got a longer lasting effect longer lasting pain free interval for the patient so these are the interventions that can be done so today we will be discussing or we will be visualizing the procedure of percutaneous balloon compression let's see how to go about it i am feeling light and electric current is running through my body wherever i touch it feels like i am getting a shock it's as if something is hitting me repeatedly strong energy is striking me my body has become weak and drained i can't even eat properly it feels like there's a current running through me it's hitting me here and my eyelids are also heavy this patient is suffering from trigeminal neuralgia and it is mainly distributed on the left side of the v1 division so uh, patient is not responding to any kind of medication so we have planned to go for a balloon compression for this patient as uh, it is a v1 division so less likely we are going for any kind of radio frequency procedure rather the best possible procedure for which uh, through which the patient can be relieved is a balloon compression so we'll see in detail how the procedure is been done so we'll be doing the procedure with this uh, montreal uh, pvc kit the percutaneous balloon compression kit and this is a sterile kit that uh, we'll be opening up now and you'll be seeing uh, the materials inside i'll be demonstrating them now these are the things that is inside that is the puncture needle uh, the dilators the manometer as well as the syringes this is what the total kit is now you can see that uh, this is the puncture needle through which we'll be putting the catheter and uh, after that you can see there are two dilators so first we'll be putting the needle then after that we'll be taking out the stylet then one uh, dilator followed by the other dilator after putting the dilator needle we take out the dilator and then you check the manometer this is the manometer that has to be made on and off during uh, the inflation of the balloon so initially just 
put the uh, tube with it and check it check the patency and uh, after that we'll be going ahead with the procedure just uh, these are the syringes which is to be filled with radio opaque dye before going for the procedure and this is the balloon catheter you can see at the tip there is a metallic end which is uh, radio opaque again can be seen under the fluoroscope and the balloon and this is that we have recorded post procedure just to see that how the balloon looks like this is how the balloon looks when we are putting uh, the liquid into it and this is on and we can make it off after that this is how outside we can see so now we'll be going to the procedure we'll be making a puncture wound and uh, this site we will be deciding only after seeing under the fluoroscope as we normally go for the radio frequency ablation we have to see the foramen oval and just near the foramen oval we'll be putting the, the needle before that uh, one thing i want to clarify that this patient is under general anesthesia because this is a painful procedure so we'll be doing it under general anesthesia then uh, we'll put some local anesthesia around the puncture wound and uh, we'll give a puncture at the site okay now we are putting the stab needle then after that we'll put the puncture needle inside you can see that we are now entering into gradually entering into the foramen oval okay and we have come confirmed it in the lateral view our needle position then we are taking out the stillet gradually we'll take out the stillet and we'll put the dilator one by one there are two dilators so this is the first dilator that we are putting now and after that we take out the first one then we go for the second dilator this is a bit thicker one so that the inside path will be clear so that the balloon can be introduced properly and uh, now we have introduced the second one okay now we confirm it in the lateral view the position will be confirming in the lateral view again whether we are two in or two out okay now we see that it is uh, the position uh, exact position where uh, the desired position so now we will take it out we'll see the pattern c just taking it out and after that we'll be taking the percutaneous balloon catheter that we'll be putting in so before entering into uh, the catheter you can see there are two marks and these two marks i will tell you that the first mark will coincide with the needle length so that whenever the catheter is inside the needle the first mark will stop at the first mark you can see the first mark that is at the needle length now after that if we enter till the second mark then the needle the balloon will be crossing the needle and it will be just 1 cm ahead of the tip of the needle where is the desired position you can see in the image that the, at the balloon tip there is a metallic one tip that i have already shown you so through that metallic part we can confirm the final position and after that again there is a metallic stillet inside that we will take out and we will attach the manometer with that now before attaching it we will make it air free and uh, with the radio pack die that we have already taken and we will start injecting the die it's almost like uh, 0.6 to 0.7 ml of dye is required to inflate the balloon so now we will start we'll start inflating the balloon and uh, you have already seen the balloon the size is gradually increasing and you can see that uh, that dilation of the balloon dilatation of the balloon on the screen on the fluoroscopic scene you can see the increase in the size of the balloon and after that we will keep it for 90 seconds almost we'll make the switch off so that a constant pressure is maintained for almost 90 seconds after 90 seconds 
will gradually deflate the balloon will take out the radio pack die and we will try to take out the needle and the catheter simultaneously not one by one rather simultaneously will take out the catheter as well as the needle and this completes the procedure and after that patient will be taken out of general anesthesia and can be kept under observation and then sent back to the room.